Welcome to Academic Game Tutorials. This is our first lecture video on operations research. Here, we will learn the graphical method. We can solve any linear programming problem using the graphical method if there are two decision variables in that problem. So, we usually get to see four types of cases in graphical method. Number 1, a unique optimal solution. Number 2, an infinite number of optimal solutions. Number 3, an unbounded solution. And, Number 4. No solution. So, in this lecture we will discuss a unique optimal solution. Let's look at an example on this. So, here we have a linear programming problem. We are asked to solve this linear programming problem using the graphical method. Here, it is given that, minimize, z equals to 20x1, plus 10x2, subject to these three given inequality equations, where there are two variables in each of them, and, at last it is said that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0. So, let's solve this problem now. At first, we will replace all the inequality constraints by using equation. Here we can see three inequalities in these three equations. We will simply replace all these three inequalities or unequal signs by using equal signs, and convert them into equations. Here we have three inequalities. So we will make them into three equations. If there were four inequalities, we would make four equations. That is, no matter how many inequality equations are there, we will convert all those inequality equations into normal equations by using equal sign instead of the inequalities. So, we will get, x1, plus 2x2, equals to, 40. 3x1, plus x2, equals to, 30. And, 4x1, plus 3x2, equals to, 60. So, all these three inequalities are converted to three equations. This is equation number 1, this is equation number 2, and, this is equation number 3. Now, there is a very simple and easy way to solve these equations or plot the lines of these equations on the graph very easily. So, to plot the equation 1 on graph, First look at the right hand side of the equation number 1, here we have 40 on the right hand side of the equation, so, we will divide the whole equation number 1 by the number 40. Dividing the equation number 1 by 40, we will get, x1 divided by 40, plus, 2x2 divided by 40, which gives us, x2 divided by 20, equals to, 40 divided by 40, which is 1. Similarly in equation 2 also, here we have 30 on the right hand side of the equation number 2, so, we will divide the whole equation number 2 by the number 30. Dividing the equation number 2 by 30, we will get, 3x1 divided by 30, which gives us, x1 divided by 10, plus, x2 divided by 30, equals to, 30 divided by 30, which gives us 1. Similarly in equation 3 also, here we have 60 on the right hand side of the equation number 3, so, we will divide the whole equation number 3 by the number 60. Dividing the equation number 3 by 60, we will get, 4x1 divided by 60, which gives us, x1 divided by 15, plus, 3x2 divided by 60, which gives us, x2 divided by 20, equals to, 60 divided by 60, which gives us 1. Now, we know that the equation for straight line is, x divided by a, plus y divided by b, equals to 1. Here, a, is the intercept of x-axis, b, is the intercept of y-axis, and then there is 1 on the right-hand side. Now, if we compare the straight line equation to these three equations, we can see the same format. Here, in equation 1, 40 is the intercept of x1. 20 is the intercept of x2, and there is 1 on the right hand side, so, this is a straight line equation. Similarly, the other two equations are also straight line equations. Now, we will plot all these three straight line equations on a graph so it will be easy to understand. So, here we have our graph. Along this axis we have x1. Along this axis we have x2. And, this point is the origin or zero. In the conditions it was given that x1 and x2 are greater than or equal to 0, so, this is the quadrant where we will plot the lines. Now, in equation number 1, below x1 there is 40, below x2 there is 20, so, 
we have 40 and 20. Now, on the graph we can see that the ranges are taken as 0, 10, 20, 30, up to 50, we have taken the points at distance of 10 in this case, because if we see here below x1 and x2 in these three equations, the values are 40, 20, 10, 30, 15 like this. So if we take distance of 10 on the graph then it will be easy to plot. If the values below x1 and x2 was something like 1, 2, 3, 5, 6, then we would take distances of 1 or 2 in the graph for easier plotting. So, hope you understand why we took 0, 10, 20, 30 over here. Now, below x1 there is 40, below x2 there is 20, so, we have 40, and 20. In the graph, we will take a point at 40 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at 20. Now, we will join this point at 40, and this point at 20, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 1, so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 1. Now, in equation number 2, below x1 there is 10, below x2 there is 30, so, we have 10, and 30. In the graph, we will take a point at 10 on the x1 axis, and along x2 we take a point at 30. Now, we will join this point at 10, and this point at 30, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 2, so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 2. Similarly, in equation number 3, below x1 there is 15, below x2 there is 20, so, we have 15, and 20. In the graph, we will take a point at 15 on the x1 axis between 10 and 20, and along x2 we take a point at 20. Now, we will join this point at 15, and this point at 20, using a line. Let's denote this line by number 3 so we can understand that this line was plotted from equation number 3. Now, if we look into the conditions given at first in the question, according to the first condition, the first line will be less than or equal to 40. So, in the line number 1, we will place arrows towards the origin, because the region that is less than 40, is below this line number 1, towards the origin. Similarly, According to the second condition, the second line will be greater than or equal to 30. So, in the line number 2, we will place arrows in the opposite direction to the origin, because the region that is greater than 30 is above this line number 2, and opposite to the direction of the origin. Similarly, according to the third condition, the third line will be greater than or equal to 60. So, in the line number 3, we will place arrows in the opposite direction to the origin, because the region that is greater than 60 is above this line number 3, and opposite to the direction of the origin. Now, we have to find out the common region for these three lines that is satisfied by the direction of the arrows in these three lines. In the line number 1, the arrow is facing in this direction towards the origin, so line 1 covers this area towards the origin, we mark it with light yellow shade. In the line number 2, the arrow is facing in this direction opposite of origin, so line 2 covers this area opposite of origin, we mark it with orange shade. In the line number 3, the arrow is facing in this direction opposite of origin, so line 3 covers this area opposite of origin, we mark it with green shade. If we look carefully, this is the only common and feasible region that is covered by all the three lines on the graph. This common region is covered by the shades of all the three lines, so, this is our feasible region where the arrows of all the three lines are facing towards this region only. So, there are four points or four corners in this region, one corner point over here, one corner point over here, one point over here, and the fourth point over here, so, these are the four extreme points or corner points that make this feasible region. Let this extreme corner point is A, this is point B, this is point C, and this is point D. So, this is one rule or one way of plotting the lines on the graph, where we have divided the equations by the number on right hand side, and then plotted the values in the graph. Now, if we don't want to go through all these steps for plotting the lines on the graph, then we can use another way also. In another way, instead of this previous technique, Let's take this first equation, now, we have assumed that x1 equals to 0, now if the value of x1 is 0, 
then we get the value of x2 will be 20. Again we assume, x2 equals to 0. Now if the value of x2 is 0, then we get the value of x1 will be 40. So, what will be our coordinates for the points? Here we have, 0, comma, 20, and here we have, 40, comma, 0. We will now join these points on the graph by one line. This is first equation, so the line will be line number 1. First we have, 0, comma, 20, which is at this point, and then we have, 40, comma, 0, which is at this point. We join these two points and then we get the same line 1 that we got using the first technique. Similarly, we can plot the other two lines also using this technique. Now, if you want, you can use this second technique, where you either assume x1 equal to 0, then find value of x2, then again assume x2 equals to 0, then find the value of x1, and plot the points on the graph and join the points to get the line. Or you can use the first technique that we have seen earlier which is very much simple and easy, where you can divide the whole equation by the number on the right hand side of the equation, then you get a straight line equation, then check what number you got below x1 and x2, plot values of x1 and x2 on the graph, and join them for all the equations to get the lines on the graph. You can use any of these two ways. Now, we have found out that this is our feasible region, and the four extreme corner points of this feasible region is denoted A, B, C, and D. Now, we have to find out the value of the extreme points. We have written the four extreme points A, B, C, and D over here. Now, we already know the value of the point A is, 15, comma, 0, that is, at point A, x1 is 15, and x2 is 0. We also know that the value of the point B is, 40, comma, 0. Now, we don't know the value of point C. If we were doing this graph on a graph paper then hopefully we could count and find out the position of the point C, but since we are doing the graph on a plane sheet, we have to find out the position of point C or value of point C through calculation. Similarly, we also don't know the position of point D, so we need to find out the position or value of point D also through calculation. Now, let's find out where these points C and D are located. For point C, we can see that, the point C is at the intersection of the line 1 and line 2. So, if we solve equation 1, and equation 2, then the value of x1 and x2 we get is the value of the point C at the intersection of these two lines 1 and 2. Let's solve equation 1 and 2 in rough, here we have equation 1, and here we have equation 2. If we subtract equation 2 from equation 1, we get, minus 5x1 equals to, minus 20, so, x1, equals to, 4, now put value of x1 equals to 4 in any of the equations we get x2 equals to 18, so, we have x1 equals to 4, and x2 equals to 18, thus, 4, comma, 18, is the value of point C at the point of intersection of line 1 and line 2, so, value of the point C is, 4, comma, 18. Similarly, for point D, we can see that, the point D is at the intersection of the line 2 and line 3. So, if we solve equation 2, and equation 3, then the value of x1 and x2 we get is the value of the point D at the intersection of these two lines 2 and 3. Let's solve equation 2 and 3 in rough, and if you are watching this lecture on operations research then hopefully you can solve these equations in rough yourself, so, to solve here we have multiplied 3 on both sides of equation 2. If we subtract equation 3 from equation 2 now, we get, 5x1, equals to, 30, so, x1, equals to, 6. Now put value of x1 equals to 6 in any of the equations we get x2 equals to 12. So, we have x1 equals to 6, and x2 equals to 12, thus, 6, comma, 12 is the value of point D at the point of intersection of line 2 and line 3, so, value of the point D is, 6, comma, 12. So, we know the values of the extreme points in the feasible region. Now, in the question, we are asked to minimize, z equals to 20x1, plus 10x2. So, 
we have to find out the values of z for the points a, b, c, and d. First, value of z at point a. The equation of z is, z equals to 20x1, plus 10x2, for point a, x1 equals to 15, and x2 equals to 0, putting the values of x1 and x2 we get, 20 into 15, plus, 10 into 0, or, z equals to 300, so, value of z at point A is 300. Again, value of z at point B. For point B, x1 equals to 40, and x2 equals to 0, putting the values of x1 and x2 we get, 20 into 40, plus, 10 into 0, or, z equals to 800, so, value of z at point B is 800. Again, value of z at point C. For point C, x1 equals to 4, and x2 equals to 18, putting the values of x1 and x2 we get, 20 into 4, plus, 10 into 18, or, z equals to 260, so, value of z at point C is 260. Again, value of z at point D. For point D, x1 equals to 6, and x2 equals to 12, putting the values of x1 and x2 we get, 20 into 6, plus, 10 into 12, or, z equals to 240, so, value of z at point D is 240. Now, in the question, in front of the equation of z, it is written, minimize z. Since it is asked to minimize z, we have to find out the minimum value of z, and among the four values of z, 300, 800, 260, and 240. The lowest or minimum value of z is 240. So, our required z minimum is 240. Thus, the minimized z is z at point D, 6, 12, which is the optimal solution, and value of z minimum is 240. So, we can finally write that, the minimum value occurs at point D, 6, 12, hence the optimal solution is, x1 equals to 6 and x2 equals to 12, where, z minimum is 240. So, this was an example of a unique optimal solution by graphical method for a linear programming problem. In the next lecture we will look into the examples for the other three cases of graphical method, which were infinite number of optimal solutions, unbounded solution, and no solution. Thank you for watching this video.